Hello and welcome to ATP Report. It's the Katie and Barry Show coming to you live on Friday with my favorite Londoner, Katie Hopkins. Hi, Katie. Hi, Barry. How are you? I'm doing terrific. Thanks for coming on again today. Let's talk about this vaccine push on both sides of the pond. Uh, Tucker Carlson, uh, Fox News, uh, seems to think maybe uh, these vaccines are being rushed out to the public. Mm -hmm. And um, he's throwing some skepticism at the vaccinators and the pushers of the vaccine. Um, and then his uh, former boss, Rupert Murdoch at 89 pops up in England and says he's gotten the vaccine and he wants everybody to get it. Um, the left is furious because they really hate Rupert Murdoch. He's a, obviously a well-known conservative and an American. Uh, and they really hate Fox News, I mean the left. But now Fox is supporting the vaccine. Uh, what's going on over there? It's a muddle and it's a jumble. Um, and I loved, you know, Tucker's rant or his opening statement. I thought it was fantastic. And he makes it very clear, you know, it's not that everyone is against all vaccines ever. Many of us are very grateful for vaccines that have saved us from various diseases over the time. He's making the point that why this kind of glitzy marketing spin as if it's some sort of Chanel perfume for the Christmas season, you know, why this kind of push as if it's a commercial product. And that's, I think, how many of us feel. There's an innate suspicion when science and medicine behaves in a way that we're used to seeing on the high street or at the mall. So that's kind of the premise of his point. And I think what's really sent people into a spin over here in the UK is news just breaking that Rupert Murdoch at 89 has had the vaccine. People are saying, well, look, hold on, you've got Fox News and Tucker who are skeptical and questioning the push for the vaccine. And then you've got the boss or certainly the old boss having the vaccine and telling people they should have it. And I suppose there's questions all over the place. Um, I'm with Tucker firmly because I'm, you know, with him that this is not a vaccine that I'll be taking. I think it's a nonsense. But I do see the rage from people who expect their networks, their news networks, I think, to be ultimately consistent, do they? Is that what people want from their news networks? Or do people want their news networks just to agree with them these days, Barry? Well, I've got a better question. Um, not to say that your question isn't uh, <laughs> right on, but over here, they're talking about even if you get the vaccine, Katie, you still have to social distance. You still have to wear a mask. You still have to stay away from public gatherings for all of 2021. But, but if it works, aren't you immune? And aren't you going to stop being a spreader? Can you explain that to me, Dr. Katie? <laughs> <laughs> yes. My understanding, Barry, and I would like actually a little white coat and a stethoscope, is that during testing of the vaccine, they did not test, nor did they have time to find out if having the vaccine can stop you passing it to other people. And as we've placed on ATP on the website, if people want to go and see it, you can see from my European roundup just how fast and hard they are shuttering down Europe. Europe will not see any of the front end of 2021, and that's with a vaccine. So I, I, it was rushed at warp speed using Trump's terminology. Um, and there's already bad news out almost everywhere. The vaccine's being distributed. You've got Bell's palsy in the UK, which is facial paralysis. There was a nurse in Alaska. I saw the video. She fainted from it and needed an EpiPen injection to be uh, kept alive. And in Australia, <laughs> there. They're withholding the vaccine because it's producing false, get this, positive HIV results. Um, and that's in a country with, get this, 47 active cases on the entire Australian content, continent. And they've ordered, get this, 10 million doses of the vaccine. <laughs> I know, and you couldn't make it up, but with the Australian example, it turns out they manufactured the vaccine using an HIV 
protein. So part of the HIV virus was used to make the protein. And then when it was introduced into volunteers, they came up as HIV positive. And these were ordinary healthy individuals now reading as HIV positive. I mean, truly it is unbelievable. So not only these reactions, the Bell's palsy, the facial paralysis, the issue with HIV in Australia, but also a lot of footage emerging, Barry, of what appears to be staged injections, which sort of goes back to Tucker's point. Why this big glitzy marketing push and why this propaganda or the need for propaganda if this vaccine is so great? You're, you're saying that some of the footage that's out there of famous celebrities getting the vaccine are BS and they're just staged for the camera? There's one video we should look at in particular, Barry, and it's a video where it is absolutely clear and it's a nurse administering it to another nurse or doctor. It is absolutely clear that injection does not happen. The presser is already depressed and yet both of them go through with the motions of delivering that vaccine. And I guess my question is, if we're supposed to believe in doctors and nurses and science, why are they complicit in this fraud? Why are they part of this propaganda machine? Oh, that's exactly the question I wanna know. And, and by the way, in Australia, with all these HIV positive results from people that got the vaccine, are you surprised that people are saying, uh, no, thank you. I'm not taking any HIV protein in my arm along with your vaccine. Absolutely. And when I posted the news article and the reference point to the scientific journal that explained it, so nothing to do with me, Instagram pulled that down as being fake news. And it came from the scientific journal where it explained how this HIV situation arose. So this sort of censorship from uh, social media that we're seeing, they will not allow any, any reference to anything that is not positive or supportive of the vaccine. Yeah, is it any wonder people are doubting social media uh, <sighs> platforms less and less and less? What's, what's going on at the Hopkins house? Mom and dad? <laughs> don't want the vaccine, but your sister says they have to have it? <laughs> yes, and I think, uh, Barry, we're probably representative. I mean, not in many ways, like they have me as a daughter to deal with, Barry, and you wouldn't wish that on many fathers. But, you know, I believe in everyone should do what they want. If they want it, great. If they don't, great. Not my thing. But uh, it seems that many families have an enforcer. And my sister works within the socialized healthcare system. So she's fully bought up, sold up, believes in it like, a, like it's the new coming, the second coming of Christ. She believes they should take the vaccine. She is fully a believer in all of the COVID hysteria and she's a believer in the vaccine. She thinks they should stay indoors and she almost polices their actions. And I've heard this from many other people of my age, your age, saying that, that one of their children is acting as the police, the enforcer you know, of the family unit. That's a very curious dynamic inside a family. Yeah, and it also reminds me of totalitarian regimes that entice the children or family members to tell on the parents or other family members. When that happens, the entire family starts to break down at the request and demand of the mm -hmm. state. And that is scary. Absolutely, Barry. And, and just briefly, if I may, you know, these are daughters now that are withholding grandchildren from the parents for Christmas. I mean, when you think of the emotional levels of that, that's a complex emotional, you know, dilemma in a family, isn't it? And I think it's the, the cruelest and meanest of all. Absolutely. Thanks for coming on, Katie. And thank you out there in ATP land for everybody joining us today for Katie and Barry discussing the news of the day. I want to remind people if they haven't already to text the letters BYA and send it to the number 88202, push send. You'll be subscribed to all of our content and get some chapters of my new book because you asked for free on your cell phone with a great link. And if you're overseas, Go to our website, americantruthproject.org, and you can sign up for the same free stuff there.
Thanks, Katie, for coming on today. And thank you for watching. For ATP Report, I'm Barry Newsbaum.